What if your AI agents could connect to over 1,400 different apps and services, including ones like Salesforce, SAP, and countless Azure resources, just to name a few? Now that is possible by using API Center to expose your Logic App connectors as MCP servers. In this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step how to turn a simple Azure Logic App into a secure MCP server. Let's dive in. Okay, let's jump right into the Azure portal and let's get started exposing our first Logic App as an MCP server. Now, the very easiest way to do this is to use API Center. So that's the approach we're gonna follow in this step-by-step -step demo. Uh, what I wanna do first is gonna go ahead and create a brand new Logic App and gonna go over here. And I wanna do this before I create my Logic App Center installation because I want to make sure I can find this logic app. Sometimes it does some caching on its side. So I found this is a little bit easier to make sure I create this first. And now it does have to be a brand new standard edition logic app. I'm going to do workflow service plan here do select. And eventually I think they said that they'll allow it to support existing logic apps, but for now it does have to be a blank brand new standard edition logic app. I'm just going to call this P I M demo. And I want it in central US because that's where my app service plane is located and it found that already. And just gonna go ahead and review and create. And gonna go ahead and create this blank standard edition logic app. It'll take it just a moment to complete. Okay, now that's complete. You can click go to resource if you'd like just to see it. I'm gonna jump back to my resource group and let's go ahead and create our APIM Center installation. I'm gonna go over here and say create. I'm gonna say API Center and select that and come right down here and create API Center. Now, I don't know too much about API Center. I've set it up before and used it to create these MCP servers. It definitely seems like a pretty cool feature in order to categorize and organize both your APIs and your MCP servers. So I think it'll be a great feature to add to a lot of enterprise scenarios. Let's just call this APIM demo. And I'm gonna also put this in, let's leave it in East US and I'm gonna select free tier. Make sure you select the free tier here and you can see it is pretty pricey. The standard edition is 699. Let's select the free tier. I think this gives you several hundred APIs and MCP servers you can register in this service. Now I'm just creating this API management instance just because it's the easiest and simplest way to expose a Logic App as an MCP server. Doing it with this approach, it'll automatically create all of the security context for us. So it will expose that Logic App for us as an MCP server using Easy Auth, which is a fantastic way to go. So with that, I'm going to go to resource and just going to jump right into API Center and looks very much like what we see for API management, or API center. What we wanna to go to is this MCP preview down here on the left. And I'm gonna select that. And we have this feature here called Azure Logic Apps. I wanna register an MCP server here. I'm gonna click register. And here's where you'll have a dropdown of all the Logic App standards that are completely blank that it could use to deploy to. You'll see that here. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And here we can go ahead and add various different connectors, individual connectors here. It has to be one connector per Logic App. And here's all the Microsoft managed connectors. I think they said in their release that soon they'll have support for other types of connectors like built-in connectors and third-party connectors. But we have a huge host of different things here. So the use case that I want to demonstrate here is I do a lot of vibe coding. So I use a prompt to generate a bunch of code in VS Code. But my biggest problem with all of this is it goes ahead and creates all this beautiful code, but I don't really have an audit trail to compare past executions of that prompt. So I want to go ahead and archive all of my code off, let's say to Google Drive, for example, so that I can go ahead and review all the code that's created. So I can compare if I use one model versus another model. And a lot of times I use different virtual machines so it's kind of confusing as to what code is running in which spot so using google drive i'm going to have a central location to archive for all my vibe coding outputs so to do that i need to look for my google drive and i'm going to look for google drive here and i want to go ahead and create a file that's all i want to do with this I'm going to go ahead and say select 
and now it wants me to sign into Google Drive. So I'm going to sign into Google Drive here. It's going to create that connection for us inside of our Logic app. So none of this has to be running on this computer or this VM at all. I'm going to go ahead and sign into my Google Drive and click Save. And just like that, I can say register. And it's going to go ahead and do all the work for us in the background. It's going to go ahead and provision our workflows. There's one workflow for each component of the connector that I selected. This In this scenario, I selected create file. So there's going to be one workflow automatically created for me. And most importantly, it's going to create that easy auth authentication for me automatically. And when we go to implement this in VS Code, we'll see how it uses that easy auth authentication. The help documentation also talks about anonymous authentication that can be enabled, but that's something that we'll show in a later video. I'll give this just a moment and I'll jump over to the Logic app as soon as this is done. Okay, that is complete. You'll know it's done by looking at the bell icon up here. You'll see MCP server registered successfully. So fantastic. So let's jump back to our resource group that we were just in. We see now that we have a Google Drive connector, an API connector that was created for us automatically. So let's dive into our Logic App Standard here and take a look at our workflows. And here enough, sure enough, we have our create file. So let's take a look at what it created for us in here. And we have our request and response, which is our two requirements for exposing a workflow as an MCP server in Logic Apps. And this request, if you look over here, it has pre-populated our information for us for our description on our request, as well as pre-populated the description on our properties. So if we wanted to expose existing Logic as an MCP server, these are steps we would have to do ourselves manually. Using API Center, it does that all for us. So it's a fantastic way to get started, as I mentioned. And it just says we need a folder path and we need the file name and then the binary data of that file. So it's pretty straightforward here. So let's see how we would leverage this in VS Code when we're using our agents to build our code for us. So let's jump back to the top level logic app here and go to overview. And what we want to look here is for this default domain. This is going to be the address we're going to use for our MCP server. We're going to use this slash API slash MCP. So I'm going to grab this right now and let's jump over to VS Code. Now here in VS Code, only thing I have here is just a basic VS Code setup. I do have GitHub Copilot installed. If you're interested in learning more about GitHub Copilot, I have a beginning video, which will be linked down below in the comments, walk you through everything to get up and running with VS Code, GitHub Copilot, and all the ask and agent mode that you see over here. But for now, everything's set up. I do have a pro account, so I do have different models uh, available to me. So, but what I want to do first is come in here and register this MCP server. So I just do MCP and I can say add server. There's three or four different ways to add servers. You can actually just go right into the JSON file and configure it yourself. It's just a trivial amount of uh, information you have to set in there. I just like going to the terminal and saying uh, MCP and I'll say add MCP server like I just did. I'm going to say HTTP server and I'm going to say HTTPS colon and then API slash MCP and give it a name. I'm going to call this Google Drive. And just like that, you can see that it has added all the configuration that we need in order to make this call to this Logic app exposed as an MCP server. So that's pretty cool. And here's where we get our easy auth authentication pop up here. It's saying it wants to make sure that I want to authenticate against this MCP server. I'm going to say allow. And now I'm going to have to go through a couple steps, select my account I want to authenticate with, go next, consent, and say OK. And just like that, I've been authenticated against that MCP server. So now over here on the left is my GitHub Copilot chat. And what I want to do is make sure I'm in agent mode. There's three different modes here. So here I can select my model of choice. I'm going to select Claude Sonate 4. I've tested a bunch of these different models. It seems to perform the best. We're not going to actually deliver code here, but we are in a text file. But I'm going to go ahead and select that one as well. And let me go ahead and copy and paste my prompt in here. Now, this is a system prompt that I've used many times on other demos. What it does is create a C Sharp API application locally, as well as a local SQL Server database to manage state of a deck of playing cards. So you can call in and get a new deck shuffled, and you can draw cards from that deck. And what I did here is added information here to not actually build the code like I would in a normal scenario, but I'm going to outline the plan of what I want 
to accomplish. And then I said, once the plan is approved, write the detailed program to Google Drive, write it to coding plans folder, give the file name plan underscore in today's date and save it as a text file. So by doing that, it's going to actually take all the code that it would have normally created here in the editor and write it right to Google Drive. So that way I'll have an archive copy of it. Once that's complete at the end, I can say go ahead and execute and create the code for me if I wanted to. But in this case, we're just going to write it out to the disk so that we can compare multiple runs of your agent. You could test prompts, you could test models, be a very easy way to compare things back and forth. So let's go ahead and execute this. And it'll take it just a few moments as it goes through and analyzes that prompt. It's going to go ahead and cancel out of that. And it's going to go ahead and walk through creating all the structure outline of this project that it would create. We'll give this just a moment. Okay, and now this meets our requirements. I'm going to go ahead and say approved. And now it's going to take all the code that it would normally create and write it to Google Drive for us. So this is going to take a couple moments. I'm going to pause and come back as soon as this is done and we'll take a look. One thing I do want to point out is I don't have Google Drive installed on this virtual machine since it is making that remote call to our remote MCP server. That M MCP server is what has the authentication to the Google Drive. So this code, this agent I could use on any environment that I'm working at and I don't have to authenticate on Google Drive on that local environment, which is a huge plus. If I was working on some client hardware I wouldn't have to worry about my credentials being on that on that server. So let's let this run. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, now it popped up here and it says it wants to access Google Drive. It wants to access the MCP server and it's asking for my permission to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and say continue here. Now there are various settings inside of VS Code that you can set up to auto approve things like this. I have everything disabled in this environment so that we can see the pop-ups that it asks for as it happens. So it went ahead and wrote everything to that Google Drive and now it's just kind of outputting here and it says when you're ready to implement and proceed with the coding just let it know and it can go ahead and build all these components for us right here in VS Code. So now let's jump over to Google Drive and see what kind of output we got. Okay, I've jumped over to Google Drive. And remember I said I don't have Google Drive or anything Google related installed on my VM. This is actually my local desktop that I'm running on where I do have Google Drive installed and I have my coding plans folder. And sure enough, here's my coding plan written today, just as we would have expected. And I can open this up in Notepad and we can take a look at that. And let's go over here and pretty much exactly what we would expect. Our full outline, the stored procedures it's going to create, all the thinking it goes through, the details of all the stored procedures, the exact scripts to execute all that. And then we see all our code down here to actually create the API. So pretty cool stuff. So this is a great example of how we can actually leverage our logic apps, expose them as MCP servers to add tools to our agents that we wouldn't normally have access to. So this is just a trivial example showing Google Drive. We have over 1400 different connectors we can pick from to really power up what our agents can do. So if you're new to GitHub Copilot, take a look at this video up here and it'll give you a great intro to GitHub Copilot. If you're looking to learn more about logic apps and how logic apps themselves can actually be used as agents, take a look at this video here for Azure Agent Loops. And stay tuned for more content related to logic apps and API agents. Thank you.